section three we are um, uh, trying to use some of the uh, ideas of uh, defining the trig functions uh, using the uh, right triangle definition as compared to uh, the unit circle now we're going to expand on this in the, in the next section uh, some but uh, notice here that I have for uh, some of the acute angles here I have uh, created a table because we had just done a couple of examples looking up various values for 30 and 45 degrees. I have the degrees and radians. This is from 0 to 90. Now if you're looking to determine the 0 and the 90 using a right triangle, of course that's going to be in trouble. But those are on the axis so it's very simple to see that at 0 degrees the x value uh, on the inner circle, that point of intersection is 1 and the y value is 0 and at 90 degrees just the other way around, the x value is 0, the y value is 1. As you can see here, radian measurement equivalences, and then sine, cosine, tangent, secant, excuse me, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So you can see them all laid out. Now we had a table like this for uh, sine and cosine in, a, in an earlier uh, um, video, instructional video. But with this, uh, we're looking at primarily these acute angles. These are the ones that you have to put to memory. I've been talking about for a while, and you can see that. I've just expanded and added the other four trig functions. Now we're going to use this table to answer a couple questions here and then we're going to look at some more identities. Uh, simplify the expression the cotangent of 60 degrees minus the cotangent of 30 degrees. Well the cotangent of 60 minus the cotangent of 30 is not the cotangent of 30. You don't subtract the angles. You're going to have to find these values. At 60 degrees the cotangent way down here is the square root of 3 over 3 the cotangent of 30 degrees that's up here all the way down is the square root of 3. Now for me to subtract these I'm going to have to get a common denominator so I'll have to multiply top and bottom by 3 of the second uh, and write this is the square root of 3 over 3 minus 3 square roots of 3 over 3 and then this is 1 square root of 3 minus 3 square roots of 3 is negative 2 square roots of 3 all over 3 and there's my value. Again, don't grab a calculator and give me an approximation when you can give me an exact value here. Now I'm going to have to uh, use the table a little bit more here, using my radians, to find the sine of power of 3 times the cosine of power of 6 plus the cosine of power of 3 times the sine of power of 6. Now, it might be difficult for you to remember this example, but later on in one of the next chapters, we're going to be doing some work with expressions that look like this for another group of identities. But for right now, we're going to substitute in pi over 3, the sine is the square root of 3 over 2, times the cosine of pi over 6, cosine of pi over 6 is also the square root of 3 over 2. It's kind of neat that these two angles here, pi over 3 and pi over 6, which are actually complementary angles, they have the same value. That's kind of neat for the sine and for the cosine. Uh, same thing here, let's we'll see if it happens again. The cosine of pi over 3, uh, pi over 3, the cosine is 1 half, and the sine of pi over 6 is also 1 half. Yeah, maybe that's a coincidence, maybe that's not. We'll find out in just a minute. I multiply the square root of 3 over 2 times the square root of 3 over 2 and I get 3 fourths. A half times a half is 1 fourth and this equals 1. Comes out to a nice amount. Well, as I was trying to point out in this example, when you have complementary angles, like I did here with the pi over 3 and the pi over 6 or 60 degrees and 30 degrees, 60 degrees and 30 degrees, it turns out that their sine and their cosine have the same value. Now sine and cosine are sometimes referred to as co-functional uh, trig functions here. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, point out the co-function identity of co-functions of complementary angles, which of course, as I mentioned before, are equal. Uh, sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent, secant and cosecant, are uh, considered pairs of co-function trig functions. Co-function trig functions. I think I said that right. So now, what does it say here? The sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of its complement, 90 minus theta. The cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of uh, 90 minus that angle or its complement. Same thing for tangent and cotangent. Same thing for secant and cosecant. 
and we can use those to help us simplify expressions or to find other values of uh, trig functions. For example, up here, for each uh, function value, give a co-function with the same value. Well, co-function for tangent would have to be the cotangent, right? And of its complement, so this would be 90 minus 22.5 degrees, which is the cotangent of, was that 67.5 degrees. There is my value. Over here, I have the secant of pi over 3 is 2. I need to find uh, the same value with a co-function. Well, the co-function of secant is cosecant, and this is the same as 90, or 60 degrees, so 90 minus 60 is 30, or pi over 6 radians. Since it's already written in radians, I'll write my answer in radians as well. All right, now that's a lot of information, not just this stuff, but up to this point that we've had in this section. And we haven't done any applications, so we're going to look at those next, including what we call the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. The angle of elevation is an angle that is measured upward from a horizontal line of reference. Now, I just happen to have an old-fashioned whiteboard uh, compass here, or protractor here, and so what I'm going to do is try to show you what I mean by the angle of elevation. See, I'm looking straight ahead. Can you see me? I'm looking straight ahead. Straight ahead, right in front of me, is a filing cabinet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, from here, without moving my head, without tilting my, you know, bending my neck, you know, up, I'm going to keep my neck the same, but I am going to raise my vision to the ceiling. The angle that is formed from the horizontal up to the ceiling here, and see if I can get that halfway decent based on my vision best I can. It looks like right here, this angle where it goes up in, uh, is what we call the angle of elevation. The angle measured upward from a horizontal line of reference. This one down here with the suction cup, that's my horizontal line of reference, at least I'm trying to hold it horizontal, whereas this angle that it up, goes up to gets me to the ceiling so that my eye, and I'm trying to keep this even with my eyeball here, will go up and see the ceiling here without tilting my head. It's what my angle of sight goes up to from the horizontal up to wherever I'm looking. That's called the angle of elevation. The angle of depression, kind of similar, is the angle that's measured downward from a horizontal line of reference. So I'm still looking straight ahead, and now I'm going to look down to the floor. Now to do that, my eye is going to subtend. I'm going to try not to tilt my head, force a habit. My eye is going to subtend down to look at this angle, so it's going to be something more like this, where this is still my horizontal line of reference, and my eye subtends. You can't see it on the video that my eye is dropping down to look at that, but that's what's happening. It's this angle right here. This is called the angle of depression. So if you're looking up at something, you're going to have an angle of elevation. If you're looking down from something, you're going to have an angle of depression. Here's an example of one. You can see my really fancy looking drawing here. This is what happens when you marry a, uh, a woman that has a, has a degree in art. You become an artist here. But suppose that a farm worker determines that the distance along the ground from her position to the base of a palm tree is 16 feet. So here's the farm worker. There's the base of the palm tree there, 16 feet. Okay. Then it says here, she measures the angle of elevation, hopefully with something better than a, a whiteboard uh, a protractor there. Um, she uh, measures the angle of elevation from the eye level, from the eye level, from her eye level, right here, which is five feet above the ground, so the distance from the floor, or the ground to her eye is five feet, and to the top of the uh, palm tree, it turns out to be 45.9 degrees. Now notice, 45.9 is not in my table here. I'm going to have to grab a calculator to do this one here. Is the tree tall enough to harvest? Now I didn't know what that meant until I read a little bit further, and it says that in, at this farm, it has to be at least 20 feet tall before you can harvest the, uh, the palm tree. Now. Since her eye level is at five feet, we've got this part of the palm tree that's five feet tall, and we have this part of the palm tree which we don't know, I called it H. And I'm going to determine what H is, and I'm going to add five to it to find the height of the palm tree to see if indeed 
uh, that this tree is, is uh, tall enough to harvest. Now because this is 16 down here, this distance from the eye, right? This is 16 feet here as well. And you see the right triangle I have. This is H. This is uh, 16 feet here, and this is my angle. Now notice with respect to this acute angle, I have the adjacent leg, and I'm looking for the opposite leg. Sokotoa, Sokotoa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. That's the function I want to use. I want to use the tangent function here because I, I'm looking for the opposite, and I have the adjacent. So I am going to write that the tangent of 45.9 degrees is equal to the length of the opposite h over the length of the adjacent, which is 16, 16 feet. I'm going to multiply both sides by 16. Of course, those 16s cancel. I'm going to flip-flop the side. I get h equals 16 times the tangent of 45.9 degrees. Now, it would have been nice if it was exactly 45 because then I could have found that the tangent of 45 was 1. But it's a little bit bigger than 45, so 1 is only going to approximate it. So what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to get Mr. Calculator out, and I'm going to have to punch this out. Now, if you're going to use your calculator, one of the biggest mistakes is making sure that the mode for the calculator is set right. In this case, I want it on degrees. I don't want it on radians, so make sure it's on degree mode and then take the tangent of 45 degrees times 16. Now I just happened to do this earlier and I got this to be approximately 16 point, oops, point 511. Remember, this is going to be, I have an H here, this is going to be in feet. Now that's not the height of the palm tree, that's the height of the tree from here up to here. Remember, add 5, so if we add 5 to this, We get 21.511 feet, and this looks like this is tall enough to harvest. So my answer is yes, it is tall enough to harvest. Now, this is just one example of what you can do with a right triangle in trigonometry as far as an application. I'm going to do another example here, but this begins a wonderful uh, a world of experience for you doing uh, uh, application problems that involve trigonometry. We start off with a very simple one with the right triangle. I have one more like that. Now I didn't really have enough space to put it on here without squeezing everything else out. So if you just bear with me here, I will quickly write this down and hopefully I'll be able to fit it right in here. If a 15 foot ladder is leaning against the wall at an angle of 62 degrees with the ground oh, with the ground okay how high up the wall Will the ladder reach? Okay, and we're going to round this to the nearest tenth of a foot. Uh, nearest tenth of a foot. Okay, now, I tell you, especially when you're first starting out doing these kinds of problems, you're probably better off drawing a diagram and labeling. Now, it won't be as good as that one because I had extra time to set that one up, but here's the ground. Well, we can do better than that, at least with the ground, I would hope. Okay, there's the ground. We've got a wall. We'll say this is the wall right here. We're going to assume that it forms a right angle with the wall, and then we've got a ladder that's leaning up against it. So this is my ladder right here. You can tell that it's the ladder, and it forms an angle here that is, I uh, have yeah, it 62 degrees with the ground. So this angle right here is 62 degrees. Now we know what here, we have a 15 foot ladder so that this is 15 feet here. 
And we want to know how high up off the, uh, on the wall will the ladder reach. So we want to know this distance right here, which I'll call H. Now for this angle, do you see how H, the side I'm looking for, uh, is the opposite leg and 15 is the hypotenuse here, the ladder. So I'm going to use the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm thinking so ka toa, I want so. I want the sine as the opposite of the hypotenuse. So I'm going to write the sine of 62 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And like I did before, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator. And those 15s cancel. I'll flip-flop the sides. I get h is equal to 15 times the sine of 62 degrees. Now, the sine of 62 degrees is not up on the table. It's close. I have 60 here. The sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, or about 0.866. However, this is 62 degrees. It's going to actually be maybe just a little bit more. So again, I'm going to have to grab a calculator and I'm going to have to plug in. Now when you get your calculator out and you punch in the, the sine of 62 degrees, make sure degree mode, you're going to get a pretty long decimal there. So when we multiply by 15, then round, in this case, to the nearest tenth of a foot. This turns out to be approximately 15 times. I wrote it down just to impress you. 0. 8829476. And if I multiply these and I round to the nearest tenth, I'm going to get 13.24, 13.2. And that's going to tell me that that ladder goes up the, the side of the wall here, 13.2, and this is in feet. Now, it's a story problem. It's a story problem. Write your answer out in a short sentence. Make sure you use proper units. So, how high up the wall will the ladder reach? The ladder will reach 13.2 feet up the side of the wall. You don't have to write a book or even a paragraph. Just write a sentence that answers it as if you were talking to someone and you were just verbalizing the answer out. Write out a short sentence on these story prompts. Some of you do a great job with that. Others of you need a little bit of practice. Speaking of practice, for these kinds of problems, <laughs> there is no substitute uh, for practice, practice, practice.